Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 16th, 2024. Well, yesterday we had some pretty rough selling, and I'll cover a little bit about that here once we dig into the meat of the day. But how about we take a look at what happened overnight? I had suggested in the right way options room yesterday to be a little bit careful the possibility that the selling that occurred um, yesterday could kind of reverberate around the world. And that seems to be the case. We have um, Asian markets were down sharply last night. Uh, the Nikkei falling 761 points. Hong Kong fell 351 points. And even Shanghai dropping by 1.65%, dropping $50.31. Holding on to that really important psychological level of 3,000, just above it at 3,007. So we'll want to be keeping an eye on that. European markets are decidedly bearish um, this morning. Uh, DAX being down 1.53%, FTSE down 1.5%, CAC down 1.40% as those um, that wave of selling kind of uh, rippled around the world. U.S. futures at the moment, however, have improved from overnight lows. We've got the Dow futures actually looking at a very modest gain here early this morning, and S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures are lower. If we take a look at oil this morning, oil continuing to show just a little bit of softness here. There is an expectation that the Israeli response to the Iranian attack may be rather limited. And so we've got oil trying to, um, the oil market's trying to sort through all of this data, but it is just ever so slightly lower this morning, down 27 cents at 85.14 and Brent down 24 cents at 89.86. Natural gas at the moment is up just a tiny little bit, just a bit over one penny. If we take a look at um, um, gold this morning, boy, we had quite a reversal in gold yesterday. Gold just uh, took off to the upside and then ended up reversing back um, or excuse me, took off to the downside and reversed back up as the selling uh, came into the market. Again, more of a fear move here, really surging. And we've got gold a little bit higher this morning. Silver also reversed back up yesterday, but silver is down just a little bit. Copper's down, platinum's down, and palladium's down first thing here this morning. Crypto's are also down. We've got Bitcoin down uh, $947 a coin at the moment, and I'm seeing some red across the board on the majority of those cryptos. So pretty rough um, um, setup um, for the day with just a lot of uncertainty going on here in the market. Now, if we look at a bonds, our bond yields are causing this problem and continue to be strong here. The two-year bond is at 4.95%, only five ticks away from a five-handle print on the two-year bond yields. The five-year bonds are at 4.65% and the 30-year bonds are at 4.76%, adding that pressure to the market and certainly uh, creating some uncertainty in the banking uh, area of the market as well. So we'll want to be keeping an eye on that. What does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. 
Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain a little information about how we may want to approach today. Remember, we want to shake off a little bit of bias. We want to just look at the charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. And I also, once I get to the earnings calendar, I need to make an apology. I made a mistake yesterday as I was going through my earnings. Um, I take um, all the all the earnings and kind of sort them out into a list that is um, what I what I think to be uh, notable for the day and doggone it um, I messed up my list yesterday and um, I gave you most um, of the list of what's going to be reporting today so um, I apologize um, got my list um, um, messed up here so I'll get back on track here today. Let's take a look at what happened here in the diamonds yesterday. And I wanted to recover this just a little bit because I think everyone was thinking, well, holy moly, we had really good retail numbers and we had um, all of this bullishness in the morning. And as you remember yesterday, I mentioned, be careful of the whipsaw. And boy, did we get that yesterday. Um, in uh, man, some real punishment if you chased in to the morning gap up um, yesterday morning. And unfortunately, um, it happened as a result. One of the reasons that we saw that is more um, CTAs. CTAs are the computers sitting out there on the market that institutions have algorithms just trading automatically. Um, they have allotments of capital that they can use and they have been maxed out here for some time. Well, what happened, um, Goldman um, in the report on um, at the end of the week was suggesting that there could be as much as $42 billion over the next month being sold by the CTAs as they've kind of been maxed out and needing to sell. And then Bank of America also came in and said that there was a potential for CTA selling uh, that came in and they even issued targets. If you guys want to take a um, screenshot of that, targets where um, we might see that um, selling pressure coming in. And I believe that's what happened yesterday. It's a deleveraging from the big CTA computers and their max positions long here um, in the market. Now you'll want to take note of that because this can continue and they have vast amounts of money um, invested in stocks right now. And if they start to unload, if they continue to feel uh, pressure here in the market. They are trend following tools. Okay. Trend following tools. If the trend starts changing here in the market, then they start unloading to protect capital. So you'll want to kind of keep that in mind as we take a look at these index charts. First off, as you can see, diamonds showing us a downtrend. So again, trend following tools not showing us a bullish trend here at the moment in the diamonds. And we came all the way down here to this price support in the chart and unfortunately breached it just a little bit. And I was looking yesterday for some bull put credit spreads and things like that to take advantage of this. It's really strange though. There, even with the implied volatility being so high, they weren't offering up any premiums in here to make those trades even worth taking a look at. Kind of frustrating, to be honest. Now, um, if we take a look um, at if the bears were to continue to push on lower, well, you can see I've marked this area down here. This would be the next logical support area in the chart if we were to push on down. And that would be pretty substantial pain uh, pushing down through there. And if you'll notice, if we go beyond that point, then we're, we're going to be start starting to look at places down here in the chart if we were to continue that selling to look uh, for some price support. Now, if the bulls can find inspiration today, well, the first thing I would do is I would take 
right here look right across there there's a little tiny bit of price resistance right through here that as you can see and i would look for a press back up if the bulls find that inspiration today to push back up into this area and if we can get beyond that maybe we push a little bit higher we run into this little junky area here in the chart um, somewhere up in here and maybe we attack the high of yesterday if we can push through that now keeping in mind we have a downtrend here as well that we're going to have to deal with so anytime we rally back in a bearish trend you want to be watching for those resistance levels and be respecting those resistance levels because as we push back up into here these are logical levels where the bears will take back over if they find any kind of inspiration in the market to do so and it's where you could also see those CTAs continue that selling um, in the market. So watch that carefully if we were to rally back into some of these resistance levels. Now a big resistance level here for the diamonds that's likely going to be a challenge for it is to push back up through that downtrend in that big area of price resistance. An awful lot of accumulated data right there uh, providing resistance now. And if we take a look at our moving averages, you can see our 50 day moving average is still above that level, but you'll notice our shorter term moving averages are dropping down through our 50, creating an accumulated moving average resistance right in this zone. So we'll wanna be keeping an eye on that as we rally back if we rally back for those levels uh, notice that that 50-day moving average has now started to turn lower so keep a close eye on that if we take a look at our spy spy certainly showing that bearish pressure here a downtrend is now in play because we made a lower high and we followed that with a lower low breaking support levels in the chart and you can see if the bears were to continue to find inspiration here today pushing us on lower well we have some support in here but it's kind of a messy um, support area in that chart maybe we push down into an area like like right in there um, and then if we push beyond we're probably down in here on that chart on the spy so that would be a rather painful sell-off if we were to break on through lower if the CTAs find reason to continue selling just know that they can unload huge numbers in stocks big volume can come out of the, mo uh, the market if the CTAs continue to sell off if we see a bounce back and I think that's probably more likely um, it, it here soon anyway a, a little bit of a relief rally to re relieve some of this pressure and I'll show you why in just a moment but if you take a look across here that would be our resistance level in the chart that we would be looking to seek if we can get up into the there passing through that area our next level would be up here and then of course then we're going to get going to be contacting that downtrend here in the chart um, and creating some extra resistance um, up in there. Now, if we take a look at our moving averages, that first resistance that I measured in um, the chart as we push back up will also encounter that 50-day moving average as resistance. So you want to be watching that area pretty closely. And even though our short-term averages have not crossed down through that 50-day moving average, they will be coming down and starting to create a little bit of technical resistance in the chart. If we take a look at our QQQ, our NASDAQ also had a pretty rough day yesterday, selling off strongly. Nasty whips off. Man, that was nasty. Um, as it probably gave a lot of people hope that, man, we were going to zoom right back to the top. And then those CTAs really kicked in and it got pretty ugly. Um, as you can see, 
there's our downtrend starting to set up. It's a rather flat downtrend here at the moment. And the reason we know it's officially a downtrend is we have a lower high followed by a lower low, moving this into that downtrend mode. Now, taking a look here, if we find um, some additional selling here in the chart, again, we have kind of a junky little area in there, but I'm gonna come across right in there and tie a few of those candles together and you can see we might catch a little support down in there and if we go beyond that point well I think there is a little teeny tiny level maybe right there to uh, potentially push us on lower however if we get a little bit of a bounce today um, or a big or any kind of a push back to the upside. We're gonna be looking for those bulls to find resistance right up through this area of the chart. And you will see if I go over here to our moving averages in the chart, as we push back up, if we can break through that area of resistance, well then we're going to have that bigger area of resistance right in here that we're gonna to have to deal with and that 50 day moving average here on the QQQ. And then let's take a look at our IWM. IWM also breaking lower. I suggested yesterday, if we were to slip out from under um, yesterday's, um, excuse me, on Friday's low that we could t attack this green line, which was that uh, trend line here um, in the chart where we broke above and held as support. Now we're slipping back below that area of the chart and showing some bearishness here below that area. If the bears were to continue to push to the downside, there is a little bit of support right in here that we might catch. And then beyond that, we're probably coming down here to this bigger area of price uh, support in IWM. Now, keeping in mind, if we were to rally back and get that relief to the upside, and I'm gonna jump over here to our moving average, whoops, jump over here to our moving average chart to show you the challenge that we've got ahead of us here as well. We've got that 50 day moving average starting to flatten out. It hasn't really started to turn just yet, but if we were to bounce back up, you'll see we're gonna have resistance levels in here to deal with as we push back up. We've got our downtrend coming into play here in the chart. And if we can get through this level, then that stretch back up into here, would be the bigger area of resistance and will still be below our 50 day moving average at that point. So kind of keep an eye on it. Can we get back up there? Absolutely, we certainly can. With um, some really good news and a big surge and of course earnings can maybe do that for us, but there is a lot of uncertainty out here and as we see those bond yields continue to hold in their firm, bond market is completely disagreeing with the bullish market right now, adding additional pressure here overall. Let's take a look at our VIX. Certainly our VIX um, shot up pretty hard yesterday, breaking out of this downtrend for the first time in a long time, breaking up through there, closing up here above um, 18 handles. We, uh, we were up here at 1923 on the VIX. What that means is if you're an option trader is all your option prices went up in value because of the extrinsic value, the implied volatility of the market turning just a little bit extreme. Now, one thing I will say is when we stretch up big and strong like that, we often get a relief rally to reduce some of that pressure. So hitting this resistance line up here, we might see that relief and that pullback coming into the market here really soon. If not first thing this morning, certainly um, within the next couple of days, we'll probably see a relief coming in to the market. So watch that carefully for that possibility of that pullback. But remember, if we hold these upside trends, if we hold some of these support levels here in the chart, then we can continue to extend that to the upside. And I know everyone right now is thinking, there's no way this can be happening. There's no way we're too bullish. AI, don't you remember AI? Well, I do remember AI and I remember also we have seen times in the market where we've 
overextended. We've got way too excited about a market. And then we start seeing this major pain move happen and um, deleveraging of those um, those things that everyone thinks just can't ever be sold off. We'll want to watch that carefully here. So if we see the bears continue to extend while well, breaking above this downtrend, this would be a problem for us if we were to break up here and hold up above that downtrend and then see um, that continued bearishness coming here into play pushing us on higher in fear of the market and kind of a major deleverage if that were the case. Um, that would suggest maybe correction uh, could be coming to the market. If we take a look at our uh, T2122, T2122, well, it had a pretty rough day yesterday. As you can see, we dropped down in here and um, as the CTAs continued to sell, pushing us lower, we ground this down uh, to the bottom. We're dragging our belly here on the bottom of the ocean and um, feeling pretty bearish. So this gives me that that hope that we're likely going to get a relief rally soon, if not today, that potential. And that's why I was looking for some bull put credit spreads to maybe take advantage of that um, yesterday afternoon. But if you take a look at this, um, a little bit of relief in here might be due. Now that doesn't necessarily mean we zoom all the way back up here. It's pretty common that we can push up strongly, we could find some resistance levels or even push up toward that 50% area of the chart. It all depends on how strongly um, we um, catch on some of these earnings and whether or not we continue to see bond yields um, hold firm. It's gonna be tough for this to push back up if those bonds stay um, very, very strong. But keeping in mind, we don't have a whole lot of room for the downside and we've got plenty of room for an upside. So I'm kind of suggesting that a relief rally could be around the corner and maybe even beginning today. If we take a look at our uh, T2108, well, our T2108 continued to extend lower. This is not a good sign for the market. Notice we started breaking the support levels in this chart. We've only got about 27% of the stocks at the close of the day holding above their 40 day moving average pretty rough but once again we extended so uh, uh, strong down here I would look for a bit of relief rally it doesn't mean we can't be coming we won't be coming down here to test these areas but we usually won't do that in a straight line we'll rally back and then we may make our way down to those levels in the chart but first off let's start looking or watching for that possibility of a little relief to the upside if we take a look at our t21 107 this is where i see that potential relief because our uh, percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average still holding above the 50 percent area so that that chance that we could get that little bit of a lift or relief here in the market um, it does seem to be playing out notice we've got a little bit of price support right in here holding in that those 200 day moving average areas we would look for a little bit of a bounce perhaps and then the question will be will we find another lower high and push on lower but watch carefully for that possibility we're taking out support levels in a lot of places and and in a lot of charts and then if we take a look at our T2101, our T2101 unfortunately saw this massive breadth increase yesterday on the sell wave. And looking into that CTA information, that really makes sense where we've got the computers out there on the market. These are institutional computers and they are deleveraging because of their trend following tools. And we are right now showing us um, in the charts, a bit of a downtrend. So we'll want to watch that carefully. If we continue to see that sell wave picking up here, well, we've got some trouble. My guess is on any relief rally, we're likely to see this market breadth pull back on any relief rally because we've shaken a lot of confidence here over the last few days in the market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar we have got a couple things to be paying attention to and a whole lot of fed speak if you'll take a look we've got um 
housing um, starts and permits here today housing starts and permits where uh, they are expecting a little bit of decline on both of those um, we want to watch that closely because there is that possibility with rates going up um, we might see a little bit more damage in there we've got jefferson speaking and then we're going to have industrial production numbers industrial production here they're expecting this to show a, a bit of an improvement on the month over month manufacturing output in a decline which wouldn't be a surprise after seeing that empire state number yesterday and then of course capacity utilization they're showing that as improving now there is a chance um, with some of those numbers that we've seen we could we could see a miss here on industrial production so watch that one carefully and then as we look um, through here we've got some bond announcements we've got a 52-week bill sale and then we're going to hear from Williams Barkin and Powell speaking today at the um, economic club I think in New York City so kind of keep that in mind um, you know, we always have to pay attention to him when when he talks um, of course looking into Friday normal mortgage applications Atlanta Fed business expectations a petroleum status number some bond auctions beige book Treasury International and then of course some more Fed conversation but that'll be after the bell tomorrow let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today and here again I'm going to be eating crow here because I made this major mistake yesterday I kind of commingled a couple of lists and I made a mess of things so today we've already heard from United Healthcare this morning they reported better than expected even after their cyber attack problem so they're bouncing up here nicely this morning after their report we've got uh, BAC that will be reporting today keep an eye on that it's trying to pump up here just a little bit we've got BK we've got C BSH on that list today and we've got Johnson and Johnson that will be reporting we've got Morgan Stanley in there NTRS will be reporting Northern Trust so keep an eye on that and PNC financial reporting this morning this afternoon we will be taking a look at um, um, FULT watch for that we've got hwc ibkr jb hunt will be in there we've got omc and we've got united airlines so watch that carefully here for this afternoon and once again i apologize for yesterday's mistake in the morning prep video so with that how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that everyone if you could do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful please do me that favor click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that i appreciate it um also um, when it comes to looking at these stocks, remember everyone that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Clearly, when we start seeing the big institutional um, rollover here, and I'm not, not suggesting it's going to continue, but they're starting to deleverage a little bit. We want to be real careful and we really want to be looking um, uh, not only long but we want to be looking for short stocks as well so kind of keep that in mind follow your risk tolerance as your rules never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas well first off I need to talk about um, the US dollar here US dollar continuing to strengthen and I had suggested uh, well a few days back watch for that possibility that we could fill that gap I think we actually have a bad print in this um, chart right now but you can see we have filled that gap continuing to move in this upside trend 
and we could potentially be running into some uh, more resistance levels up here if we continue to extend. And right now, the way the bonds are acting, there's every reason to believe that could be the case. And remember, as the dollar strengthens, it's usually tough for the market. What is unusual is seeing that as the dollar strengthens, we're seeing gold continue to hold lots of strength. We're seeing countries recent purchase by China. Even as these prices are going up, China's buying gold, India's buying gold, Russia's buying gold. And not only that, all the gold bugs like me out there in the world are buying gold, um, have been for some time. And this run to the upside is something to celebrate for all of us that are holding gold, but don't be too surprised if this catches some kind of consolidation or a pullback here at any time. And it could come in hard if we start to see maybe some of this fear drop out of the market and see these bond yields pull back here just a bit but keep an eye on those take a look at silver silver still attempting that breakout up here of this major area of the chart and let me go to a weekly it's not an all-time high but it would be a massive multi-year high if silver can break out above there keep an eye on that you'll want to be watching those things closely um, when we take a look at energy here energy has been resting and pulling back and that's exactly what we want to see here in the chart so i would not take my eyes off of energy and energy stocks as we continue to pull back we'll want to watch this carefully in here if we were to hold some price support levels and come into this trend I would look for that next opportunity for the upside. Remember, geopolitical situations are very uncertain. Um, any mistake that happens um, over there in the Middle East could really ignite um, a, a broader conflict. So we'll want to be watching very carefully here on those oil sector stocks. They could certainly uh, be dramatically um, influenced by what happens over there. So watch carefully. If we take a look at our financials here, well, our financials had a rough day yesterday. Big old bearish engulfing candle here in XLF. Breaking, obviously, breaking this trend. We're beginning this this downtrend here in the chart. We broke some important support yesterday. Now, once again, I would look for a little bit of relief in this, a little bit of a relief bounce. But as we relieve back up, I would be watching for that next opportunity to find a uh, short in there if these bond yields continue to remain this heavy. Uh, because this puts a lot of pressure on the banks. And I'm going to say the same thing about... Um, our regional banks as our regional banks um, suffer this pressure you can see breaking a little bit of support here in the chart yesterday but it wasn't as bad as i would have expected we've got this downtrend resuming here in the chart so any consolidation out here to trend any rally back i would be looking for um, that opportunity to maybe pick up um, short position in KRE. So be keeping a close eye on that. Other places in the market, well, we've got some, um, uh, I put a price alert on TSM yesterday early in the day, and then it ended up um, getting caught up in the selling, sweeping down, breaking that trend here in the chart. Yeah, not the best look here overall. Um, I've been, as you guys know, I've been talking about ADM and that possibility it could fill that gap. Well, even even things like this that are, have been showing so much bullishness being drawn into the selling. However, if this does find some buying in here and we recover in this area, I would still look for that opportunity that we can make our way back up. I mean, food, food products, obviously, even in um, a bad stretch of the market, we're going to need them. So uh, keep an eye on those. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, some of those pay systems could um, reignite and maybe come back to the top side, or they could fail. And well, we saw yesterday kind of both. We bounced up here and really hard selling yesterday coming into Visa. What you'll want to be paying attention to is we failed at resistance here in the chart and we broke through support 
in the chart. So any rally back, if we could push on down, but any rally back now, we have to start watching for that potential downtrend resistance to come into play and additional selling. And I'm going to say that is the same across um, quite a few, you know, take a look at SQ breaking support yesterday, MasterCard breaking support yesterday. Um, we're also seeing in a lot of the um, uh, tech sector stocks like ADM breaking some support following that downtrend here in the chart. And even the um, undisputable king here of the market and that being um, Nvidia, well, we created potentially a higher, a lower high here in the chart. And you'll notice it's not a very big one, but there is a possibility that we've got a little head and shoulders pattern starting to form here. So this could be a critical area in the chart. If we fail the neckline of that, watch for that potential that we could see more selling coming into NVIDIA. Um, obviously, we heard some bad news from Apple yesterday with Chinese sales falling, but we have to watch this for the potential bull. We pushed up strongly here and, and really on almost no news. We pushed up really strongly. Now we pull and pulled back. We're breaking this little um, area of price support here in the chart. But if we can hold this downtrend for the higher low, then there's every reason to believe that we could push back up. So watch that downtrend break to see if there's that opportunity for that to push higher. I apologize today, just so much to explain and that CTA took a little bit of time. So I'm running out of time here. In fact, this video's run long. You guys, I wanna thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting the channel. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you all right back here, bright and early uh, Wednesday morning. I wanna wish you all the very, very best today. Take care now.